Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. Today we'll be creating the WordSpace health bar. You know, the one that is following the character wherever it moves. Because in general the health bars are boring, we'll add this smooth nice transition from the old value to the new one. Let's get started. Over here I have this little angry orc walking in the forest. As its child I create new UI image. I call it bar background. I click on the canvas that has been automatically created for me. We want the UI to be in the word space, so I adjust the render mode. I use the main camera as the event scene. Because I want my health bar to be always on the top of everything, I change its sorting layer to something in the front, in my case FG, and then adjust its order in layer to a very high value. For the bar background I select a nice image. I click on the set native size button to make sure that the aspect ratio is alright. Alternatively you could check the preserve aspect checkbox. If you are wondering why we don't see anything that's because our canvas is huge. Let's fix that. I set its dimensions and position to zero. Ok, we see something. But it's definitely not what we would like to see. So let's fix that too. We click on the bar background and adjust its scale to be 0.01. Much better. Let's now move the canvas above the orc's head. Now I create a new script and call it bar. We want this bar to be pretty reusable. This time we'll use it for the health bar, but you shouldn't have any problem to use it also for other statistics. Because of that we'll try to keep the naming pretty generic. Let's add the script to our canvas and maybe let's rename it to something better. For example, word space bar. Now let's open our script, remove unnecessary stuff and let's create the serialized property max value. It will have public getter and private setter. Then I create another similar property, this time for current value. I call it value. Now it's time for a public method. Let's call it change. It will take a certain amount as a parameter and then modify the current value by that amount. I use clamp method to make sure that it never gets below zero and above the maximum value. In your game the value will be probably modified by stomping on a trap or after being hit by the enemy. Here we don't have any of that so we'll modify the value using the left and right mouse button. Because I use the input system package as my condition I use mouse.current.left or right button dot was pressed this frame and then I simply change the value. If you are not using the input system package you can simply replace my condition with input dot get mouse button down 0 or 1. And of course you should check those two tutorials about input system package. Let's get back to Unity and set the max value and value to 100. When we start the game we should be able to modify the value using the left and right mouse buttons. And of course the value shouldn't be able to go below zero and above the max value. Fantastic! Now as a child of the bar background I add another UI image. I change its width and height to make sure it fits nicely inside the background. Then while holding shift button I change its anchor point to the left one. This also adjusts the pivot point. And as a result, we can simply adjust the width of the bar to indicate the new value. We'll need two different bars, one white and one red. I call the first one the bottom bar and the second one the top bar. The order of drawing items on the canvas is based on their order in the inspector. So make sure that the bottom bar is first and the top bar is second. And of course let's adjust the top bar color to something nice, maybe red. Now let's get back to our script. We'll need references to our bars, actually to the rect transform, as this is the component that will allow us to modify their width. Then let's create a field for the full width of the bar. Then let's use it to calculate the target width. The formula is pretty simple. We multiply the new value by the full width and then divide the result by the maximum value. Ok, of course we need to know what is the full width. Let's grab it from the rect transform of one of the bars in the start method. We'll need to modify the width of the rect transforms multiple times, so let's create a nice extension method that will allow us to do that a little bit more conveniently. 
you can learn more about the extension methods from this tutorial. I create a new class and call it Rect Transform Extensions. I make it static, and then inside of it I create a public static method called setWith. To make it an extension method of the Rect Transform, I use this keyword before the first parameter. The second parameter is of course the width. And then inside of it I simply change the size delta of the transform to new vector2 with the new width and the old height. Inside of our bar script I create a new method and call it adjust bar width. Because it will be coroutine, I make it return the i enumerator. As a parameter will accept the amount which will be used to calculate the new value. At the very beginning we have to decide which bar will be changed suddenly and which one will be animated. If the amount is positive, that means we are healing the character. In this situation we want the white bar to be changed suddenly and then the red bar to be nicely animated. If we would make the top bar to be changed suddenly, it would completely cover the bottom bar, which would make the animation completely invisible, and of course the other way around. If the amount is negative, that means the character has been damaged. In this situation we suddenly decrease the width of the red bar, and then animate nicely the white bar. Now we set the width of the sudden change bar to the target width. To animate the slow change bar we'll use the while loop. Because the rects width are floats, we may get strange results if we try to compare them directly. A little bit safer way would be to compare the absolute value of their difference with a given threshold. In my case the threshold is pretty large, 1f. This will allow to break out of the animation when it gets too slow. Inside the loop I change the width of the slow change bar. To calculate the new width I use the lerp with three parameters. The first one is the current width of the bar, then the target width, and then for the third parameter I use the time delta time multiplied by speed value. Let's create for it a serialized field. I think animation speed will be a little bit better name. Now to make the coroutine wait until the next frame I'm using the yield return null. After the loop finishes I want to make sure that the slow change bar has the proper width. Now let's add a field to store our currently running coroutine. Now inside of our change method I check if the coroutine is there. If so it means the animation may be in progress. In that case in order to get the correct result I need to stop the coroutine first. And then I start the coroutine, of course assigning it to our field. And now I need to set the references to our top bar and bottom bar on the bar script. And let's test it out. Let's check how the animation speed affects the animation. Fantastic! If you found this tutorial useful, don't forget to leave a comment and like this video. And of course, the most importantly, have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.